The sixth video on second order modelling looks at systems with two tanks. Now earlier videos looked at tanks which had just a single tank or tank systems with just a single tank and what we showed is that if you assumed that the flow through the outlet or the restrictions could be approximated by a linear curve then you ended up with the first order differential equation. What we want to do now is ask what happens if there are multiple tanks and in particular we're going to look at two tanks and demonstrate that the modelling is still straightforward and gives rise to simple dynamics. We are going to make a simplifying assumption that is that the flow through any restrictions can be approximated by an equation a bit like this. The flow is some constant times the pressure difference between the two sides of the restriction. Now obviously this is only valid for small changes in flow but I'm not going to define exactly what I mean by small. In practice it's good enough to understand the key dynamics which are going on and often it's the broad based dynamics which you're most interested in. So just a reminder of what was covered in the first order videos. You were given a picture a bit like this to represent a tank and you'll see there was flow coming in there was flow going out through some form of restriction and as we just said the flow going out was given by R times the pressure difference in the tank and the pressure on the outside of the tank and so you had this equation R rho G H. Now the rate of change of volume in the tank can be written as A dH dt, A being the cross-sectional area, H being the depth and that must be equal to the flow in minus the flow out. If you put these two equations together, you ended up with your first order model. There it is, ADH dt plus R rho g times h equals the flow in. Now, what's going to happen if we put some tanks in series? So you'll see we've got a tank at the top which has an input flow, it's got a depth h1, and it's got a restriction or an opening at the bottom, so flow can escape and we're going to call that flow 1 2. Now the escaping flow goes into a second tank which has a depth h2 and that also has a restriction where the flow can come out and the flow coming out I've written here as f out. So we want to ask ourselves how would we go about modeling a scenario such as this. First of all let's find out what some of the numbers are. Well we've said that the flow through restriction can be represented using an equation of this form. So you can see the flow out of tank 1, F12, is given as R12, that's some constant, times the depth in tank 1. And that's because obviously the pressure at the bottom of the tank is proportional to the depth. And therefore, we can write an equation for the depth in tank 1. There it is. A1 dH1 dt equals F in 1 minus F12, which is the outlet flow. And you'll notice that's identical to what we had for a tank on its own. What about tank 2 then? Well, for tank 2, we're going to get the same sort of model. We're going to get A2 dH2 dt equals F12 minus F out. So F12 being the flow into tank 2 and F out the flow out of tank 2. And you'll notice these two models here have identical structures. But there's one final bit we need to add. That's what's the flow out of tank 2. And there it is at the bottom, R2H2 is the flow out of tank 2. So all in all, we've got four equations which represent these tanks in series. So what I want to do is simplify them and see if I can actually solve for the depth in tank 2. First of all then, what was the equation for the depth in tank 1? There it was, A1 dH1 dt equals F in 1 minus R12 H1. And what was the equation for tank 2? There it is, A2 dH2 dt equals R12 H1 minus R2 H2. And you notice the problem here is this tank 2 model has got an H1 and an H2 in it. What I'm going to do is rearrange this second model here. So see this one here I'm circling in blue. I'm going to rearrange it so that the H1 is on its own. So you'll see what I've done is I've moved the R2H2 to the left hand side and then I've divided through out 
by R12. So now I've got an expression for H1. Now having got an expression for H1, I can take that and I can put it in there and I can put it in there and in doing so I will eliminate H1 from the equation. So this is what we get. You'll notice at the top, if I use red now, we had A1 dH1 dt and so you'll see that's this term here. I've got A1 d dt of and this bit in red brackets you'll notice is just H1. I then had F in minus and you'll see the second term we had minus R12 H1 and so there we are minus R12 and this bit at the bottom here is also H1. Now if you look at the equation at the bottom now you'll notice it's written solely in terms of H2 and F in 1. Now if I rearrange all that here is the equation you get and you'll see it's a second order differential equation. Now the sorts of things you might want to do is say okay can I understand the behaviors of the depth in this tank. Now I could argue from simple engineering that although this is a second order ODE it doesn't um, contain the possibility of having all the dynamics of a second order e ODE. In particular it cannot be underdamped and I can make that argument simply because the depth in the first tank must always be represented by a simple first order ODE and that governs the flow rate into the second tank. However there are alternatives and so a challenge for you can you prove that an ODE with the structure given here can never be underdamped so it's always overdamped stable and overdamped and the key observation once you've proved that to yourself is that if you have tanks arranged in series like this then the dynamics is always I shouldn't say underdamped it should say overdamped What happens then if I arrange the tanks in parallel? And here you'll see we'll get a subtly different model and that's because now the flow rate from tank 1 to tank 2 doesn't just depend on H1, it also depends on H2. So now there's a coupling between the two tanks. So if you look, the flow rate is given by this equation here. You've got R12 times H1 minus H2 equals the flow rate between the two tanks. The flow rate out of the second tank is the same equation as we had before, R2, H2 equals F out. The equation for the depth in the first tank is the same. You'll see I've got A1 times dH1 dt equals F1 in minus F1 2. And the flow rate for the second tank is nearly the same, but you'll notice there's a subtle difference because what I've done is I've added an extra input flow just because there's a possibility to do it, and that's come down here. So there are the four equations and what you now need to ask yourself is can I solve these four equations? Can I solve for H1? Can I solve for H2? But there's more coupling in this example than there was when you had the tanks in series. So it's not quite so straightforward as the previous example. And that's because, for example, if you look at this F12, you'll see it's got an H1 and an H2 in it. And so both differential equations have an H1 and an H2. So, what am I saying to you? Well, first of all, you need to decide which variable you're interested in. Do you want H1 or do you want H2 before you solve? Because that will affect how you reorganize these equations and how you eliminate things. But, what's more important at the bottom is I think you're going to find it's quite difficult and messy to do that, although it's possible. And so in the longer term, you might want to use something like a state space model because that makes handling everything just a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is eliminate F1 and F1, 2 and F out because they're written in terms of depths. So I've got this equation here for the level in tank 1 and you'll see it's got an H1 and an H2 in it. And I've got this equation here for the depth in tank 2. So there's my two differential equations or coupled differential equations. And I want to write these in a more compact form so I can do some analysis. And I'm going to use a state space form. Now we've not covered state space in these series, but hopefully you can see here how straightforwardly it works. I've got dH1 dt in the top row, and then I've got a row here which multiplies on the vector h1 h2, 
and a row here which multiplies on the two inputs f in 1 and f in 2 and then the second row corresponds to dh2 dt so you have a nice compact form which includes both depths in a simple state space model now because this is got two states it's clear that the model is still second order okay however and this is key the dependence of the behavior on the different parameters is much less clear if I say to you how does changing for example R12 change the behavior of this model and you might say well it's not quite as easy as, as all that because everything's coupled and mixed together and you might need some cumbersome algebra to unpack this or a different set of tools so here's the conclusions it's clear that simple ODE methods are becoming cumbersome even with just two tanks and the dependence of the behavior or the ODE coefficients, coefficients on individual parameters is no longer simple so certainly if you had systems with more than two tanks then you're going to have to look at other modeling approaches such as state space and other analysis processes and you're probably going to have to resort to some form of computer modeling software however up to two tanks you will probably agree that the modeling is relatively straightforward and you can see that the dynamics is straightforward and overdapped